Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to give an in-depth look at placement and tile check rules inside of Grid Builder plugin. So this would be updated for version 4.1. So in the demo, if you hit B to go into a build menu, and you select an object, as soon as you hover that object over the placement area, it's going to be checking the tile check rules for each of these rule check indicators to see if the area under the placement is valid or not. So if I hover over an area, which is checking for, let's say, a collision check rule, seeing if there's any collisions and failing if so, then we would by default see that rule check indicator. So that's the most basic and common rule. Let's move the cursor over here to the edge of the tile map. So this is the within tile map area rule. So if your cursor is targeting any area with any of these rule check indicators that is outside of the target tile map, your main tile map you've assigned for the Crib Builder plugin, then it's gonna fail even if there are no collisions. So by combining those two, you can make sure that there are no collisions, but also that you are placing on tile map areas. So combining two rules like that, if you want it to apply to every placeable object in your system, would mean that you go to the building system or the manipulation system, and you'd look for the placement validator resource, which is shared between the systems because they both use it. And then you would put two placement rules inside of here. So the collisions check rule, you can just click on the drop down and do a collisions check rule. And then within tile map bounds rule, likewise is in there. So having two rules set up would just mean that you'd find the placement validator in either the building system or manipulation system, or in your project, I usually save all of the resources to the project so they can be accessed independently and referenced between objects, is that you would come in here to the base rules and you would assign multiple rules here. So you can click on the drop down to create a new rule. So you have your collision check rule here, very standard. And then you can also choose a within tile map bounds rule. So then these are their own resources. So you want to expand them to edit. So with a within tile map bounds rule and any other tile check rule, you want to apply that rule to objects that are on this mask. So you would choose the mask that you want to use for this. In this case, I'm choosing the used space area for the object being placed. So used space being defined separately from the actual physical collisions, which more, would be more on like a layer one physics world layer. And so what this would mean is that for any collision object that has this layer inside of the scene you're trying to place, that it is going to generate rule check indicators and evaluate this rule for all of the placement tiles. So if I jump into the smithy scene, you can kind of see what I mean here. So the actual physics shape is right here where we have the fences of the smithy and the building itself, but the used space is being defined separately as this collision shape. So the static body is the actual physics, but the area 2D root of this scene has the collision shape that defines all of the spaces which this object takes up. And since the smithy, if I scroll down here to collision, is on layer 10, it's going to be evaluated for those rules. However, the static body, which you can see is only on layer 1, will not have that rule applied to it because it's not on layer 10. And that's basically how you can tell the system whether to evaluate a collision shape against a rule or to ignore it just by defining the collision layers in that scene. So we go back out to here and you'll see that the collision check rule in the demo project is also using the used space for placement. So we want to make sure that there's no collision under the placement areas, even though the collisions that the player will be able to run into might be a little different. So thinking about how you define the collision masks and which objects you're applying to based on those masks is a big part of how you evaluate the right areas while keeping your actual in-game physics separate from your placement evaluation. So inside of the within tile map bounds rule, that's basically all you need to assign here. So when it evaluates this, it's going to be looking against the target map that is set on the grid targeting state. Generally, all you need to know if I go ahead and open up a level or your game world, is that with the grid state assigner that you can assign to a level or the game world, whenever you want to load these properties into the grid targeting state and the building state as needed, you assign the target map, which is your main map, and then you can assign all of the other tile map layers or tile maps into the maps node so that those can be also evaluated in certain rules. But the target map is your main one. So if you're talking about where your cursor can target or not target, so speaking of that, one change that was recently made 
is that your cursor by default can go off the target tile map grid. So if you want to once again restrict it so your targeter uh, can't go off this tile map area, then if we look at uh, one of the systems and we go to grid targeting system, we open up the settings, restrict map area here, you can toggle that on. I think that this is most useful for a isometric game um, and not so much for top down and platformer since I think most of the games are going to be in those two categories. I thought it made the most sense to keep that off by default. So if we restart the project and I go to the isometric demo, I can show how that will look when it's off. So if we select the blacksmith, generally you'd want to be placing that onto these tile map spaces. And it might not make sense to actually allow it to come out here. So you can see that even though my cursor goes off the tile map, it'll only snap to the nearest tile for placement. And that's what it looks like if you have this setting on. So let's take a look at the platformer demo. And you can see that in this case, there is only one placement rule by default in the base rules. So use space layer cannot be occupied. So basically a reoccurring theme here is that if a space is marked as used, we don't allow placement onto that. But a difference in the platformer demo is that that also includes the tile stem here. So if I try to place onto a tile that actually has that physics layer, then you'll see that it's already occupied. The reason for that is simply because in a platformer side-scrolling style, you would build up on tiles, not onto tiles. So that's why that needs to be distinguished. And if you need to set up your tile map to reflect that, let's go ahead and open up the platformer demo level. And then we can see on the tile map that that just means that you mark tiles to have the collision layer 10 used space. And I, it's 10 in the demos, but really whatever layer number works for you, it, it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent about it. And then if you need to assign a physics layer to a tile, then you would go to tile set, paint, select the property physics layer. I guess in this case it's zero. And then just mark the physics shapes on each individual tile as you need. All of these game tiles should be blocking actual physics on collision layer one, uh, but they should also be taking up space with layer 10 over here. So back on the platformer demo, another thing that needs to be noted here is that each placeable object, the placeable resource specifically, you can assign custom rules for those placeable objects. So for instance, a box in the platformer demo needs to be placed upon a buildable space. So this is being marked by uh, I think layer 11, which is called the buildable layer. So the tile beneath the box has to have that layer in order for this to be placed. So clicking there, you can see it was allowed because these spaces down here are buildable tiles. Now I'm using collision layers rather than, uh, there's another rule for checking tile data beneath a uh, space because the tile data would not apply to physical objects like these boxes we're trying to place, but the boxes can have collision layers. So you can actually mark a box to have that collision layer, layer 11. And so I can keep stacking boxes on top of here because each box is also a buildable space. So that means no matter how many I build, the space beneath it is marked buildable. And once again, buildable in this case just means that it's marked layer 11. And we're using a collision check rule to do that, but passing on collision rather than passing on lack of collision. So that's just a toggle here. We have a special layer here to apply the objects mask for tile check only. Tile check only indicating it's only used for checks. It's not going to have anything to do with game physics. Uh, we're just checking what's beneath it. And in this case, what we're checking for is that the space beneath the box is marked buildable. And this is set up on the placeable resource which defines the rules and other settings for how you place the actual packed scene into the game world. Okay, so if we take a look at the actual box scene, so this is what the placeable defines as the packed scene, which you're placing into the game world, then any object you put in your game that you wanna be moved or demolished by the manipulation system, or even to be rotated during object placement, should be given a manipulatable component node. So this is a node when Grid Builder is enabled, you can just right click on any scene, look for manipulatable and add it in. And then inside of here, if we go into the settings, you can set tile check rules for when this object is moved. And you can mark whether the object can be rotated, flipped, or um, 
moved and demolished, and eventually there'll probably be extra settings in here as well. Uh, so for right now, though, if you want an object to be moved, by default, it will use the base rules no matter what you assign here. You can ignore that as you can ignore them on the placeable if you need to have all of the rules be completely custom and just ignoring whatever the placement validator has. But here, uh, just like on the placeable, I assigned the same must be buildable area where right here, the space down here has to have a uh, buildable collision inside of it. And then once again, for uh, separating your collision shapes for how they get used by the system, the buildable check only used for tile checks is being assigned to layer 15. So it'll never be used as physics in the demos. And then for the actual physics collisions up here, if I look at the root uh, rigid body 2D, we, you, we can see this has a bunch of other layers. Used space, one for world collision. It's also marked 11 for buildable and 12 for targetable. Targetable indicating that it can be targeted by the grid positioner. Uh, so I did mention that in the base tutorial, but just as a quick refresher, if uh, I go to the demo project and we have the grid positioner, you can see that this acquires its targets by using a collision mask. So you define this and I set it to a layer I mark targetable. So any object that falls under the cursor and is marked targetable will be picked up for targeting and that gets used by the manipulation system, target highlighter, and a few other things as well. Okay, so back to the top-down demo. If we look at the Smithy placeable, then you'll see that there's one extra placement rule here, which defines a spin materials rule generic, as in it's going to acquire the player's inventory as assigned to the building for targeting and manipulation system by if I scroll up here, we look at the placer state, the all systems user. So we have a player scene. So this state holds the current user for these systems, which is also where we're gonna grab the inventory out of. So if I look at the top down player scene, I'll see the user assigner sets uh, the root of the scene, the player builder as the user in those systems. And then this resource just shares this reference to those other systems. So all you really need to know is that you assign a user assigner when you want a character to use the building systems and uh, make sure set on load is checked too. So it automatically assigns. You'll note here in the player builder that it has a materials container. So this can really be whatever inventory you are using as long as there's a node that can pick up the inventory and has you know those kind of add and remove functions. Um, then you can put whatever items inside of here that you wanna be able to spend. And then if we look at the Smithy placeable once again, then you'll see in the generic, it's going to spend a stack of resources. So here it's kept generic. It's just a resource stack as in a stack that holds any resource reference and then how much you want to spend from it. And where is it acquiring the node in order to spend the materials? So remember that the user is being marked as the root here, the player builder and then it's going to acquire the inventory from under here. So the locator uh, can work by node name, script name, as in the name of the script that is the inventory, or group name if you like to use nodes and then groups over here, then you can assign that as an option as well. So I think that the most straightforward way is just a node or script name. It'll match that name and when it finds it, then we can spend materials from those containers. So as an example for a non-generic spend materials rule, uh, usually you would have to have the inventory system set up for that because how an item stack is defined varies from inventory to inventory. But uh, that was the whole idea behind creating this side plugin, grid building inventory. So you can use this as a kind of like a starter point if you want to have an idea of how you can set up a non-generic spend materials rule. And then you have the rule on here, spend materials rule, non-generic. So that basically, if I was to add another rule here, we can click on the drop down, spin materials rule. You'll only see this one if you have grid builder inventory installed. And then this, you can see a non generic item stack is defined, which has the advantage of, well, basically, you wouldn't have a huge resource menu drop down here. You can just click and then quick load your base items from the project uh, instead of having every resource type in this drop down menu. I think that's a huge advantage. And then, yeah, you can just define the material you need, how much you need, 
and it will basically work exactly the same. So another advantage here is that it doesn't need a node locator because in the script you can just look for the class of your inventory object, which is called item container in this case, and it basically works the same. So um, just thoughts on implementing your own spin materials rule, that would be a good place to start. But if you're okay with you keeping things generic and locating the object and inside of here, you can see big resource menu. What you can do instead is just drag and drop the material over to here and just place it there. So it's not really a big deal. It's just a little less nice. So that in a nutshell is about everything you need to know for rules in the grid building system. If you want to check uh, the code for any of the rules or the base classes placement rule and tile check rule, then I would search just rule on the project and you'll find them all right here. The actual template rules that I use in the demo project and then the base classes which if you want to implement your own rules, there's just a few functions from them. You need to uh, put in a child class that inherits from placement rule or tile check rule, um, and then set up your own validation rules in that part of the code. So I hope this was a helpful in-depth tutorial on how everything works rules-wise with grid building 4.1 and above. If you have any questions or run into any hiccups, feel free to shoot me a message. The Discord link on the readme of the plugin is a great place to uh, reach me. And I will see you guys in my future video content.